Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. Today's program is entitled, How to Choose the Perfect Gift for Yourself This Holiday Season, Financial Security in Retirement. But first, let's see how today's news may impact your financial future. Millions of Americans who count on the U.S. Postal Service to deliver their holiday cards and gifts to loved ones each year are not expecting to have the same delivery options this time next year. The Postal Service is facing insolvency, due in part to the money they owe the federal government to pre-fund postal retiree health benefits. Without radical changes, the 236-year-old organization will face bankruptcy. According to plans announced on December 5th, the government is considering closing more than 250 processing centers next year. And if they do, nearly 30,000 postal workers will lose their jobs. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. The U.S. Postal Service is in jeopardy of running out of money by this time next year, unless drastic measures are taken to avert bankruptcy according to its chief financial officer, Joseph Corbett. The Postal Service reported a net loss of $5.1 billion for fiscal year 2011, and that does not include a payment of $5.5 billion that is due to the federal government to pre-fund postal retiree health benefits. The Postal Service has been losing 7% of its first-class business the last three years, which accounts for half of its revenue every year. At this pace, a record loss of $14.1 billion is expected for 2012. Congress passed the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act in 2006, requiring the Postal Service to pre-fund its retirement health benefits package for the next 75 years. Under this provision, the service is responsible for paying up to $5.8 billion into the Retiree Health Benefit Trust Fund each year through 2016, which is unlikely to happen. On December 5th, Postmaster General Pat Donahue noted that Americans will see many changes as part of a cost reduction plan the service needs to implement to become solvent. Donahue said the service needs to cut $20 billion by 2015, which means more than half of its 487 processing centers will close as early as next year. The move is expected to save $3 billion per year. However, approximately 28,000 postal workers will lose their jobs in the process. Donahue released a study that found more than 3,000 post offices across the country made less than $27,500 in annual revenue. These post offices faced closure along with 385 others that made less than $600,000 in annual revenue and have five or more other postal service locations within a two mile radius. Okay. So now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. Many consumers will feel the impact of these changes by the Postal Service, both in their pocketbooks and their mailboxes. The cost of a first class stamp will go up to 45 cents on January 22nd next year, while the Postal Service slows down its services due to severe budget cuts. First class delivery has been available in this country since 1971, with mail arriving in one to three business days. The proposed cuts will virtually eliminate overnight delivery for stamped letters, with mail arriving in two to three days instead. Technology is to blame for the drop in demand for the Postal Service, and the American Postal Workers Union agrees. The union does not think the Postal Service itself has done enough to modernize and speed up its offerings while competitors like UPS have been busy keeping up with change and is projecting record profits this year. Even Donahue admitted, when you have a gigantic shift in technology like we've experienced, it's awfully hard without substantial changes to keep your head above water. There is, however, a bigger issue the Postal Service needs to resolve as soon as possible, which involves the pre-funding of retiree health benefits. The deadline to pay the $5.5 billion to the federal government has already been delayed a few times this year. 
The service clearly does not have the money and is seeking congressional approval to spin off retirement and health benefit programs and renegotiate union contracts. Either one of these solutions could help alleviate some of the debt that has been building up over the years since Congress passed the law requiring the service to pre-fund retiree health benefits in 2006. The provision of the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act that addressed pre-funding benefits was put in place to prevent such costs from being added to the federal deficit in the future, much like Social Security. Unfortunately, the Postal Service cannot cover these additional expenses and may have to cut 220,000 jobs by 2015. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? The U.S. Postal Service is a unique organization, which in years past has actually paid for its own operating expenses without the assistance of taxpayer dollars. Now, as a government-run organization, many regulations have been put into place over the years, stifling the post office's ability to survive, while giving private sector competitors like UPS, FedEx, Kinkos, the opportunity to surpass them in service and profitability. For example, Congress prevents the post office from raising postage fees faster than inflation, even though their costs have increased. In addition, Congress won't allow the post office to offer any other services besides the sale of postage and mail delivery. In some countries, post offices double as banks or sell financial services, both of which greatly improve its overall profitability. If drastic changes aren't made soon to our U.S. Postal Service, you won't have to worry about rain or sleet holding up your mail. You can blame it on the avalanche of overregulation and micromanagement from our federal government. And now for Matt's weekly financial tip, tool, or technique. If you're lucky enough to have an employer who still offers a defined benefit plan, you have several options as far as payouts available to you come retirement time. Here are four payout options to consider when creating the ideal income stream from your pension in retirement. Option number one is the single life payout. This option pays out the biggest benefit and is calculated based on a single life, which is yours, which means it ends at your death. No benefit is available to your surviving spouse. So this might be appropriate for a single retiree or a couple who can cover the loss of income if the spouse who is receiving the pension dies first. Option two is the spousal continuation payout. Unlike the single life payout, these benefits continue on if survived by a spouse. The downside is the monthly benefit paid to the retired spouse is reduced versus the single life payout. The upside is the monthly payments are paid out for the life of the retiree and the surviving spouse, no matter how long each one lives. Option three is the lump sum distribution payout. Some plans give you the option to take your pension funds in a lump sum that can then be rolled over into an individual retirement account, or IRA. Taking the lump sum distribution allows you to invest your money as you wish and gives you many more options to choose from which may give you even more income in retirement. And the last option is the pension arbitrage payout. If you're married, consider taking the higher single life pension payout and buying a life insurance policy on yourself. With this strategy, you will receive a higher monthly income during your lifetime, and your surviving spouse will receive a lump sum income tax-free benefit upon your death. Knowing all your options before you structure your pension payout can help you maximize your retirement income stream. I also recommend you consult with a qualified professional before making any decisions on this important election of benefits, because once you decide which option to choose, you can never go back and change it. Be sure to log on to our website and download our featured report, The Truth About Retirement a free report that examines why preparation is the key to a financially secure retirement. And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Until next week, dump debt, invest wisely, believe in yourself, and make it happen.